in all kinds of business, uh, you start from uh, uh, a study of the competition, study of the market acceptance, uh, then you go, uh, you go back and uh, with, you find yourself with a budget with which you manage. Then you start compromise. I said I'm going to do the opposite, the contrary. What I'm going to do, I develop the product that I like and at the end, the price will be the result of my choices. Technical choices, uh, uh, aesthetical choices, uh, philosophical choices, whatever. But this is the way I want to handle the matter. Because otherwise, I will do a product that everybody has because uh, everybody is doing the same compromise and at the end, nothing. As I said, to put my watches in extreme condition. Uh, when I started, everybody was saying, oh, it will be your watch, uh, be careful. Uh, uh, if you touch like that, uh, you damage everything. So never play golf, never do that, etc., etc." So I was extremely motivated and decided to put my watches in condition to be worn, whatever the situation. So because I consider the high-end watch business uh, must be developed in that sense, that is to say, to make lifestyle products. And what I love with my watches, although sometimes it, uh, it brings problems because I see sometimes watches coming back for after sale service and I say, oh my goodness, what did they do with those watches? Because they are scratched all over. But I love that. The fact that they don't put them in the safe, the fact that uh, uh, they uh, sometimes you say, I don't know what did they do with the watches, but it's fantastic. When I started uh, with, the, with uh, Nadal, the day he had the first prototype on the wrist, until he, he started to play on, on tournaments officially with a watch, he broke five to six pieces. Many people could have said, oh, poor Rick. No, I was happy because he, he obliged me to level all details, to work on all details until he, it, it was uh, uh, totally perfect. And, and I learned a lot. If I, I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have learned anything. I would have stayed with my watches ready for pictures. Those cliché about, uh, for example, that all the marketing people have got in mind, such as the perceived value. So a watch uh, weights two tons, then it has a value. And it doesn't mean anything. It's the same if you were speaking about a car, saying the car where, where weights uh, three tons, it has a value. A car today that were three times is ready to put to the basket. It has no value because uh, uh, the conception, because everything like that. For me, it's very important to speak pure performance, comfort, ergonomy. When I uh, bring a limited edition in gold, they, they come and they say, Ricardo, it's too heavy. And the same people that 10 years ago were, 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 that were telling me, uh, uh, but. Uh, uh, why don't you do it in gold? Why uh, the watch in titanium is as expensive as the watch in, uh, in solid gold, etc., etc.? Uh, uh, and then they tell me, but it's not comfortable to wear a watch uh, that is that weight so much. Because also, if you speak about uh, cost, uh, in terms of cost, the, the, the price of the gold in, for example, in my watches, uh, represent only a very, very small uh, percentage of the value of the watch because most of the value uh, is in the technique and in the caliber.